Hey guys, thanks for joining me in my studio today. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a drawing of this model. This model is from posespace.com. Uh, if you've never been there, I suggest you take a look. They have hundreds of models in probably thousands of poses, both clothed and unclothed, uh, full figure and uh, portrait. And it's just a terrific way to get a lot of practice. And if you're serious and, and really want to dig into some poses like I'm going to be doing here today, um, you can purchase the poses for a really reasonable price. So I always believe that it's best whenever possible to draw from a live model. But if that can't happen, then this is certainly the next best thing. Um, so this is the model we're going to be working with today. And I just want to run over to begin with. Um, how I go about getting a game plan for any drawing I'm going to be doing. And this applies to drawing, painting, and also whatever subject I'm going to be painting or drawing. Um, so the first thing I look for is I'm just trying to establish a game plan. And so I start with um, looking for a gesture. And so let me just start up the camera here. So even though it's a static subject and not, you know, moving and in life like a model, we can still kind of establish a gesture of this. So I see, you know, a strong neckline there and a kind of a nice lilting line like that. And that can be my gesture. That kind of gives the spirit, the feeling of the pose. So the next thing I do then is I need to find a way to construct the drawing on my drawing paper. And to do that, I start looking for large geometric shapes that I can generalize. And when I make them geometric shapes, I can measure them one against another so that I get the um, proportions of the pose right. So, for instance, I see the hat here is really kind of a rectangle sitting on top of everything. And I see a very pronounced almost a right triangle attached to it um, that composes her hair and her ear. And her neck, if you notice, that strong, tight neck muscle there, sternocleidomastoid, makes pretty much of a square. And then we've got the shoulders coming off like that. And I see a fairly strong triangle shape in the nose. You don't always get that, but in this case, I think it's fair to abstract that into a triangle. And at this point now, there's no other clear kind of geometric shapes that are going to help me. So I'm just looking at pretty much of a oval or a, you know, one of those mask shape like that. So. That then will help me construct my drawing and then from there I'll put in all the features. Now the next thing I'm going to do, let me just clear this and I'll show you, this will be movie number two. Movie number one will be getting it all set up and ready to start rendering um, value. Movie two will be then on top of that starting to draw in just value shapes. So for instance, all of this can really be one shape. like that <clears throat> and then there's one shape about like this I can choose to draw it like that or I may just go ahead and, and shade in that eyelid and then there's a bit of a value shape right here as well and perhaps just one on the nose like that now other things I'm noting when I'm drawing this I'm looking for my lightest lights so that's one of them, a real important one right there. There's a highlight here. Uh, there's one on the nose right there. 
and a couple important ones on the lips. Okay, along with that, my darkest darks. This area right here is going to be a real important area for my darks um, because that pushes the ear forward and also makes the head kind of turn in that direction. Okay, the hat is shaped by an important dark there. This is kind of a real generalized dark that there's no detail in. It just is going to allow the forehead to come out of it. And then down here, this area right there is fairly important too for establishing the overall shape of the pose. Okay, so that's an idea of how I analyze every drawing before I get going, how I analyze my reference material, whether there's a model in front of me or whether I'm working from photography like I am today. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this and get started. Okay, so now I'm at the drawing table here, and I'm ready to start. I'm working on some Strathmore um, Bristol board, which is really smooth. It's meant for layout of comic books. And I'm working with a couple of my lead holders. I have um, my HB lead holder here, and I have this one loaded with 6B lead. And then I've got my 9B Derwent pencil as well for the real darks. So I'm just going to start laying this out now just like you saw me do in the um, earlier video where I was working on the tablet. I'm going to go for that initial kind of gesture of the neck muscle and her face. And from there I'm going to start to try to develop some of those overall geometric shapes that I was talking about. So here's the square formed by our neck muscles. Um, I'm going to arbitrarily pick a point where her chin is at its lowest. And I might have to adjust this gesture line a little bit because it would be nice if that became my center point. And uh, then arbitrarily just pick a place for her hairline. And in this case, the hairline's under an immense amount of shadow. So this is the distance of the head from chin to that, actually that shadow line, because I can't see her hairline or the really uh, where her head actually is underneath that cap. And that becomes relevant in a minute. Um, when I start talking about these dimensions that we look for when we're doing portraiture. So the first dimension we look for is where are the eyes placed? And generally the insides of the eyes <clears throat> will be placed, you know, that point, that axis of the eyes will be halfway between the chin and the top of the head. So in her case I'm going to measure this out and you know, if she didn't have that cap on, it would be, but it falls a little bit short of the cap. So let's just say, for instance, that this is about the line of the eyes right here. All right, so if I take this up to there, this is going to be a little bit short of the cap line. And that gives me that measure. Now, there's another measure we look for on the face, and that's instead of dividing it in half, now we're dividing it into thirds. So the first third is from the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the nose. And then we look for the next third to be from the bottom of the nose to the middle of the eyebrows, and her face works that way as well. However, the last third is from the middle of the eyebrows to the hairline. And her hairline's a little bit lower than that. So if this is the hairline here, then we're going to look for the face to be about thirds. And we just have to kind of test that out. And then the hairline to be a little bit shy of the thirds. So if I put the bottom of the nose there. And remember then, these are all fluid measurements as we go along building this. So this should be bottom of the nose 
This should be about the middle of the eyebrows. I'm going to lower that a little bit because I've got our eyes right here. And then this would be roughly hairline, shadow line. Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, roughly hairline here. And then top of her cap's going to be about here. Okay, so that that's for the vertical dimensions of the face. Now I'm going to start going for those overall shapes that I was talking about earlier. I see kind of just a big rectangle, and I'm not sure how wide this is yet. We'll get to that, but this parallels this line here at about that point. And then there's this triangle that's attached to that rectangle about it comes substantially below the eyes. So if we said it was about like that, I don't think we'd be too far off. And um, then there is the triangle. So I got the base of the triangle here for the nose, and I think I'll just use my initial gestural line. And this is going to come right into that center line I drew, right into the base of the eyebrow, only it's going to cut about like that. And I might as well, while I'm at it, put that shadow line in. Okay, now the tricky part is just getting this width right. So I'm just going to start very lightly drawing in you know, somewhat of a, 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 like a mask shape that's at its widest just above her nostrils. So it's at its widest, a little below her eye line. And then smooth it out in this direction. And that seems to be about right. This is always the toughest part. It's getting the width of the face. It's easy to get the height. And there are a lot of measurement systems for the width of the face. Um, five eyes across, etc. But when you have a face that's in two-thirds, almost two-thirds pose like this, those measurements don't really apply too much. So I'm going to put a little triangle here for her hair. Got that cap placed just about right. The brim is going to be a little bit in highlight, and it's only going to come to about there. And the rest of the cap kind of Peels around behind, and I might have that a little bit too short. So we'll lengthen that up to about there. Okay, so this would then be her neck, and that shoulder line comes up just a little bit higher than the chin at the at the point of the chin. And we've got, I'm going to bring that neck muscle in a wee bit. I think we're a little too wide up there. Bring that neck muscle in a little bit to about here. Draw a little square for where her throat is. And then that other neck muscle is wrapping slightly. And they both attach right here on her collarbone. They go from right behind the ear where you've got this knob on your skull. The muscle attaches there and then comes in and inserts onto the collarbone right here. So that's why you see this sharp kind of little structure right there. Okay, her eye or her ear is just above, it's at the level of her nostril. So if this is the very bottom of her nose, her, her nostril is going to be actually about there. And I am going to have to raise this eye line that I have. That's off. So that's not a problem. That's kind of adjustments we always make on these. But I do have that nostril a little high too. It does sit along the line of the nose. And then the nose goes up back up in that area there. So 
clear out a few of these lines that are going to lead me astray. If this is my eyebrow line, then my eye line is going to be actually right about here. So it wasn't too far off, but far enough that it's going to make a difference. All right, so with my eye line established now, I can begin to figure out exactly where my eyes are going to be. If I draw a line down like this, I think that gives me sufficient face. On this side, it cuts in a little bit and smooths out, gets wide. So again, just to repeat what I was saying about the measurement, the width measurement of the face. The face is, if, it's, if you're looking direct on, is usually about five eyes wide. You've got one eye, the space of one eye, the second eye, so this would be like the top of the nose, the empty space, and then about an eye's worth on either side when you include the hair. Or, or actually up to the closely cropped hair. That gives you about the width of the face that you want. Now I got my head a little bit wide here, I think. It's going to feel awfully, awfully wide. Okay, so it's shaping up a little bit here. I'm going to follow this eyebrow line along. That will help me establish Again, hunting around for the, the, that width of the face. That seems about right. Okay, I'll bring the hairline up a little bit, not too much. So now it's starting to take shape. Give her a little bit wider of a chin area there. And a lot of these... Um, construction lines that I'm putting in, I'm going to leave because they kind of add to the beauty of the drawing. This one, unfortunately, lies just right in an area that's going to be highlight. So I'm going to tap that out. And notice I'm tapping my eraser. You get your kneaded eraser all warm and gummy, and you tap rather than scrub. Because when you scrub this thing on the paper, you end up scarring it. And your pencil going across those scars will definitely show those scars, right? So now I want to get this really important line of the nose. It's very dramatic because it's got dark on the side of it. And I don't think I have it centered enough. Let's see. Yeah, that could come over just a little bit, so. Because now this is going to cut over and shape the front of her nose like that. And so we have a kind of a geometric shape right there on the front. Then we see this nostril more as a little bit of a highlight than a shadow. And this one goes up. We get the actual curve of that nostril. And it's real dark and then the side of the nose flares out like that and comes up about like that. My tr for initial triangle there, a wee bit wide. So again, it's, it's over and over, it's feeling these shapes out. You know, you, you draw a little bit, you check it out, you adjust. Now, here's another hard thing. It's really difficult to get the mouth placed. Because depending upon what the model's doing with their expression, that mouth is going to be all over the place. So I always look for the shadow underneath the bottom of the nose to help me figure out gonna, what's going to be going on with the lips. So I have a shape about like this. And it comes over, and we're not seeing an awful lot of her right side of her mouth. Because that's receding. So we've got a plane here that's going backwards. 
and uh, those guys are really hard to indicate. I've got some shadow underneath the lip and then the lip comes out into the light a little bit. Um, her mouth isn't terribly wide on this side either, although it does go somewhat past the nose. So up like that and then this cuts down and there's a significant highlight, important highlight right here. into a shadow there. Let me just get this line here and let me see if it all comes together or if that mouth is I've got the chin I'm going to have to drop. Okay, one important thing to know here is that if you take a look at the chin in the reference drawing, the reference photo, the chin is defined by reflected light coming back from up underneath. It's reflecting off of her skin here. So we want to make sure that when we get this drawn, we put the shadow there, but we leave, we leave it such that this is light against this shadow. So just kind of feeling out these forms. Uh, this eye, let me reestablish that eye line. This eye comes up like this. She's got this kind of gaze cast down pose, which is really beautiful. It shows reflection in her thought and the arc of her lash line. There is some iris showing, which I don't believe I'm going to try to render. I think it's more important to the pose to just have this inward look and so we won't I won't be trying to actually render that um, it's happening over here too I'll block in a little bit of that uh, I really need to get rid of this line here so I can feel what, what's happening with the nose that is good here So while I'm, I'm talking about these features by their name, I'm saying nose and eye and things like that um, for the purposes of this video, but when I'm actually doing it for myself, I'm, I try very hard not to think of like the word eye or the word nose because we all know what an eye looks like, right? It looks like this. And we all know what a nose looks like. It looks like this, right? And herein lies the problem. When we say nose and we say I, all of a sudden we're fighting our preconceptions, what we think we know versus what we're actually observing. So we start to make these generalizations with our pencils that we shouldn't be making. So if I say this shape rather than this ear, it's kind of like you're playing a little game with yourself, yeah, but it really does work. Um, you'll find that oftentimes your greatest enemy when you're working is your mind, the things that you think you know, and you'll find that you end up fighting that an awful lot. So I'll clean that up a little bit. Get that neck reestablished here. And then notice that this shoulder here, as it comes in towards the head, is quite a bit higher than this shoulder. It gives us that tilted feeling. So I'll drop that down. And now, just one more look at this nose. It feels a bit wide. So I'm getting the face parsed out rather nicely. The features are falling into place. I've got a fairly good nose structure here. I have it a bit dark to my liking because it's throwing me in being able to evaluate it. So I'll get that nose more to a point and I'm going to re-indicate this nostril because I 
believe I have it somewhat wide here. So if I put it there and then bring it up and around like this, that's going to be more like it. We do have a, just like a gutter here that's really in highlight. Working with the hairline a little bit. I'm not going to distinguish these lines too much. I just want that all to form one dark area. Um, the brim of the hat will run right along this line here. When all is said and done, I'll pull that out with an eraser. She's got a bunch of curls right here, which I'll put in as value, and then I'll draw out highlights with my eraser. And then just hair down to almost the chin line on this side. And then the cap, shorten that cap some. About like that. So it looks like she's wearing a cap and not a pie plate. Okay, so almost there as far as the first part of the drawing goes. I'm just looking to have all the structure laid out. And once I do, and I'm happy that it's going to act as a map for me, I'm going to come back and forget about the structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in then value shapes. So that will be part two of this three-part video series of doing a drawing. So the first part just about finished here. I do have to show that line underneath the eye. She's got the slightest bit of, it's not color, it's, I, I mean, it's not shadow, it's skin color. That's, you know, like, if, if I looked at my face, there'd be bags there, but on her, it's just a slight coloration. Could even be makeup, but I don't think it is. So again, just judging the width of things here, the nose still doesn't feel quite right. Let's get that other structure of her lip here. Drawn like that, and she has a bemused kind of expression. I don't think I have that yet in the mouth. So I'll try to refine this a little bit. Again, so much of this is in shadow, it's going to be far better to try to build this all in the shadow area. I think, let's see, nope, I've got that mouth just about right. Take away this area there. Okay, so I think for right now, we will call part one finished. And we'll pick up with part two.